Keith Kelly is the First Nations representative for Jane. That's me. Base live? Uh, yes, I am. Wow. I've had so much coffee today, I've probably got water in me somehow. <laughs> oh, yeah, I got water in me. <laughs> like where? can do that. I have such a room full of people. I don't <laughs> think anybody's going to mind. I like those feet in there. <laughs> now we got to switch cameras and not support. <laughs> it must be perfect. I can't remove the camera. Zoom it out. Yeah. Your button. Okay. Aha. Aha. Wider and thinner. It's going to be You're cheap. expecting me to write on this board then, aren't you? Yes. Are you uh, going to? Because we'll just, like, when you add your notes, I'll, I'll, I'll put, um, you know when you can, like, put the face? <laughs> are we going to war? Huh? Are we going to war? Yeah. I don't know. Oh no, I think it's not ready to get into submission. I think they're not ready to submit. I think there's some of that. I think that it's coming from an old train of thought. I mean, I don't know all the ins and outs of what, what they're thinking and what. I don't know. Is he, is he not wanting to connect with us at all? Is that the gist of it? I don't know. I don't know. So, we have to talk to him about it. He said he thought this would be a good one to ask him since he's a little more familiar with it. Right. I'm like, well, Sean, he's got, he's got the big one for you. Yeah, just run with it. Yeah. I said, you know, and... Well, the guy's got favor with the guy that's at Union Place. Mm -hmm. He's a Christian guy. He's got some people interested in coming. Just do it. Yeah. Just do it. You know? Just do it. It's just, we'll just send them our bill this way. I know people you count on, and so because they're not doing it my way, I'm not going to show up. Okay. But that's fine. Just be... Another two years behind. You'll be the ones that catch up when Kentucky goes and it comes rolling back this way, and then finally you'll, you know, <laughs> we're the ones that will are detrimental to it. Well, this is still too far. Yeah, I know, but guess what? I actually got some water right there, hidden. <laughs> I was really excited because I found 65 pages of notes on Christian past today that I have. <laughs> that you had written up already? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Plus a dream I had about ancient past that I like, it must have, you know, it might as well have been somebody that sent it to me because I never can't even remember it. So this is like finding those pages that were written in Arabic. Yeah, that's Bobby what Jones. it's kind of like. <laughs> that's how I felt like. Uh-huh. I'm reading on quantum physics again. I'm reading on, I'm just reading a bunch of stuff. Awesome. Yeah, we'll be seeing it. 
this as well. Okay, good. I saw Sean up here. Let me do this for we. Elon will probably be getting up here this Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. This Saturday. This Saturday. This Saturday. This coming Saturday. Yeah. We're going to Pennsylvania. Is that when you're going across the pond? Yep, we'll get there just long enough to rest and then on we go. We should have stayed longer. Well, it costs money when you fly to stay longer. Our rental seven breakfasts. Just seven breakfasts. Maybe it'll be good. It's not, it's not good time to stay on. Yeah. We're not close to the mall where that would be good. Yeah. We're doing better on better breakfasts. Yeah. 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 The yeah. systems yeah. systems yeah. would like yeah. to yeah. Yeah. provide a fun Friday when we can all go off and try to check out yeah. that stuff. That would be not this stuff. Lots of cliff walking? Yeah. 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 Ready? Well, I just shared on Facebook Lives that I was doing this live. I shared the bases live feed onto my page, so we'll see if we can gain an audience. So I want to talk tonight on sieging cities for about 15, 20 minutes. It might go a little longer. And then we're going to apply that into our state of what we need to be doing in our state and how we should be approaching things. And then um, we're going to shut off the live stream and then we'll go into prayer for our state here as a group. Um, I'm going to talk out of Isaiah chapter 2, verses 2 through 5. And, of course, this is about building the mountain of the Lord's house. And I've been looking at ancient paths, and in here it's talking about ancient paths. So I just want to read it. It shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow unto it. And many people shall go and say, Come, ye let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people. And they will beat their swords in the plowshares and their spears in the pruning hooks. And nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come ye and let us walk in the light of the Lord. I'm going to probably talk about this passage in Isaiah off and on over the next few weeks. Um, there's a whole teaching I got on pathways, ways, the ways of God, the paths of God. But tonight what I just want to start with is just bringing out in this that there's ways of, in the old t days, they would siege cities. They'd have um, battering rams and they'd have siege uh, things that they built. They had trebuchets. They had all kinds of ways to siege a city. And this is a teaching the Lord gave me probably 10 years ago, and I don't think I've taught it even here in Des Moines since we've been here. But I'm just going to kind of run through this. Um, this what, it, what we see in this is there are, there are um, when you start to siege a city, there are, there are faces that are involved. And there's in this section of Scripture... The Lord started showing me that we have men, angels, the spirit, and the presence of God. Those are things, those are the faces of sieging a city. Men, the sons of God, are, is a face that's in a city. Angels is a face in the city. It's the host of God. The spirit is the faces of God, the sevenfold nature of God. And the presence of God is the very essence or the origin of God. All those faces are the faces of uh, within a city to siege a city. It takes all four of those things to bring change into a city. Now, these, these faces, they, these are like, um, well, they all have expressions. Let's get into the second part. These faces... Men, angels, spirit, presence. I don't know if I should write stuff. 
maybe I should write stuff. And we'll make some sort of a, a chart, a master chart when it's done. Men, what did I say? Angels. Angels. Spirit. Spirit. And presence. So those are the four things that must, that it's like those are things that must be all activated in a city to see a, ch a city go through a transformation. Because if you just have, if you just have the sons of God in a city, you're not going to see a city go through transformation. You need angelic hosts fighting. You need the spirit of God and the, and the sevenfold nature to be present to shift the culture. And you need the presence to sustain it. Now, all of those have expressions, and we must, we got to have men present. If you don't have men present, you can't siege a city. And you got to have angels present. Angels have to be released to siege a city. And you got to have the spirit, the sevenfold nature, to be seen to siege a city. And the presence, what it does is it sustains a conviction in a city. So those four, those four elements... It's like, it's like God can't do it without us. He has to have us. He can't, he's not going to bring change to a city unless we get activated into that city and become a face in that. And all four of those are, are invading cities because they bring a result when they all get moving. So what happens is it's like they, they bring the staff, if you look in Isaiah there, it talks about a staff, talks about a sword, it talks about a stake, and it talks about oil. Well, the staff, the staff is the nature of God. So this is God's nature. Nature. The sword, the stake, the oil, the sword is the word of God. The stake is the Son of God, and the oil is the Spirit of God. So, setting in Isaiah there, in that talking about the change that needs to occur, there's the staff, the sword, the, the stake, and the oil. These things right here, this is... This is the weapons of war. That's what these are right here. That is how you that is how we are to be warring. We're to be warring with the spirit of God, the son of God, the word of God and the nature of God. And those are those are instruments of war or things of war that start to bring change. The um, those things release the breath of God. Those things release the authority of God. Those things require relationship with God. Those things require positioning with God. All of those are dynamics of those, of these, the nature of the word, the son, and the spirit. These, there's requirements to be able to hold the weapon is what it really comes down to. And so the main requirement is a deepening of the relationship of God. Now, all of these, we come back over here, men, angels, spirit, presence, the sons of God, the host, the faces. Maybe we should do that. Sons of God, faces of the uh, faces of God, the host of God. And God's presence, which is the essence of God. Those there, here's how those begin to fulfill. These, these here, these are weapons. And on this side, these are the truths of God. These are the truths. It's like. I think the one that we really struggle with is being sons and daughters of God, that we really struggle with trying to understand that truth into our life. How, what does that really mean? How far does that really go? 
when we start talking about the presence and the essence and the spirit and the angels, I think we don't debate too much about any of those things. Those things are pretty much settled in us like those that, yeah, God is in heaven, the angels are there. It's like we aren't debating that. But when we start coming into the sons of God, what are the sons of God supposed to be doing? And what do each of these things do then? It kind of goes like this. The sons of God are supposed to be walking in the pathway. We're supposed to be moving in a journey. When it talks about a path, it's talking about the journey or manner of life. It's talking about that in Isaiah. We're supposed to be walking in a path. What's the, what does the, the host do? The host start bringing the word of God. I know I'm sloppy writing and all of that. What does the faces do? This is the exaltation of God. And the essence, what really builds this is this. The essence is actually the house of God or God's dwelling. And everyone's wanting God's dwelling we're wanting to get down to that final stage of presence and dwelling, but it also requires these other aspects to come in. Is everyone kind of following? Is this making sense tonight? So we'll try to get this to make more sense. So when we start looking at it, they start to bring results. Because we're talking about the staff, the sword, the stake, the oil. These all parallel over. But we'll go back over on this side now about weapons. So what does, what does the staff or the nature do? It makes and builds the mountain or the house of the Lord. And it's, and it's basically doing that because God's nature is filled with authority. And there has to be a certain authority to build the mountain of the Lord. The word of God becomes the law or the foundation of that house. So we're building this mountain or we're building this house. And we have the law as a foundation or the word of God as a foundation. And then the son of God, when we start looking at this, the son of God, what Jesus actually did is established and what he did is he fixed everything in a position that was not yet fixed. So when he came as the stake, it was like driving a stake in the ground. He literally was, he was fixing himself into that place. And then when we look at the oil, the spirit of God, we are then coming now because see we're over here in pathways we're coming over here now where we're walking in ways, the ways of God. Does this make sense? Because see, the spirit of God is going to teach us the ways of God. So it's kind of like we have weapons, and all these weapons are actually forming something in us. These are all being formed as a, it's like your life is a weapon. See, it isn't like the weapons of our warfare and our carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. This pulls down strongholds. What is a stronghold? How do we pull it down? It means to utterly destroy where there's not one block laying on another block. It literally has reached total destruction. That's a sieging of a city. A city wasn't sieged until the wall was down. They could utterly destroy a city with some of the stuff that they did. So if you start looking at this, I went into Ezekiel 4, 4 through 6, and Ezekiel laid on his side, and he went through the action, this action of taking what I just put on the board here, taking his position calling upon God and the presence, staff, sword, stake, oil, all this. And he goes and lays on his side, and it says, Lay also upon thy left side, and lay the iniquity of the house of Israel upon it, according to the number of days that thou shalt lay upon it. 
thou shalt bear their iniquity, for I have laid upon thee the years of their iniquity, according to the number of the days, and he says how many days it is, and when you've accomplished that, then lay on the other side and bear that iniquity for 40 days. And so what he did, when you start looking at this and studying it out, he was doing the act, a prophetic act of sieging for a city or a nation. And it, and it has elements in it where I'm out of board space. Maybe I can come over here. And these are the elements, but actually what I would call them, oh, that's not going to be seen. They are disciplines. So these are things of discipline of the flesh. And if you do this, it makes you qualified to be the weapon, which is really cool. First thing he did is he had fasted speech. He watched his confession. He watched what he was decreeing. He watched what he was praying. The second thing that he did was he had a fasted lifestyle. The third thing that he did was he positioned his breath, it says he positioned his breath to the north and to the south. He positioned his breath towards what was needing reformed. So he was... He was, uh, how would we put it? He faced what needed reformed. I don't know if we've done that. Number four, he had to know the falseness to release the truth required. So he, he sorted out what was false and release truth. He came in the opposite spirit. Five. He spoke by divine utterance. Six. He was bound to his assignment. It's a lot of information, isn't it? You can rewind the video and watch it later. So when you go back and you look at this, Isaiah is like the verse that we're looking for of how do we build something? What are we wanting to build? Hidden in that verse is these elements. And then it's like, can we see a pattern of these elements being walked out by a man's life? Well, we see it with Ezekiel of what he was required to do prophetically to break and reform, bring reform into the nation. And it was these things here that he was asked to do, which are all things of disciplines of his flesh. That enabled him then to be this weapon of war, because it's kind of like this is what gets him to be this, which lays this in place. And it's because of these truths of these faces that he understood that there was this eternal realm that's working. And there's an eternal realm that's working on our behalf. It's like, but do we really understand that there's something I got to do to make this work? And there's also this, that I, my life is a weapon. All of our lives are weapons. And we have, to sharp, we have to sharpen our weapon. Maybe we have to sharpen the word or the nature or we have to sharpen the spirit of God walking through us, walking out the ways of God, but we have to sharpen those things and discipline those things and cause those things to take more of a, a foothold in our life. And when we do that, you see Ezekiel, Ezekiel uh, everyone thinks that Ezekiel went on like this monster fast 
What he did is he, he actually ate a portion every day, but it was the portion that God gave him. The fasted lifestyle was not like I just, I'm not ever eating again. He was like, God will feed me. God will take care of me. It was putting him in a place of dependency upon God to come. And, and if, if God did not come, he was going to die from just plain that malnutrition. So a lot of times people read that, and they don't do any more studying in it, and they find out it's like, no, he didn't just lay down for 300 days on this side and that. He looked at it almost like a job. He went and laid down where everybody could see him. Then he got up and did something. Then he came back and laid down again. And so it was like his life becomes a living testimony. And then that's when the, the change occurred and everything started to shift. So that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. So when we start talking about sieging cities, you know, we can get into all kinds of things. It takes prayer, it takes fasting, it takes this, it takes that. I come back to this. It, it literally takes, we're here, we're positioned, but there's these other elements that are working. And somehow we need to pull those elements in to what we are combating with. It's like we're trying, I think we're trying to do a lot of things on our own strength and our own abilities instead of the Spirit of God is infusing life into what we do. And we're speaking just like Ezekiel. We're coming out of this with a divine utterance is what we're speaking. Like tonight, it's like we should speak with a divine utterance when we're praying. It shouldn't just that we're praying because we're praying. We should be praying because there's a divine utterance that's coming out of us. Where's that utterance coming from? It's coming from the Spirit of God. What's the Spirit of God trying to reveal? Is He's trying to reveal His ways in what we're praying about tonight. That we could see His ways and know how He's working so we partner with Him. That's how simple it is. And it's like if we would start doing this and start aligning ourselves with the, the Holy Spirit as we pray, we would probably see a lot greater results a lot faster. So that's the teaching tonight. So we'll let Facebook land go, and we'll see you next time. Hopefully that helps you. And um, if you got any questions, I guess you can send them to me.